Just as pretty as any girl in your class. Why does he pay any attention to me? He will. Just give him a little time. He's probably just bashful. Most boys are, you know. Now come on and eat something. Things are never as bad as they seem. Now this will work out. He just an ugly duckling. Now listen, honey, don't say that because you're not. Oh, hello, Andy. Hello, Ruby. Hi, Amos. Oh, hi, Andy. Hello, Abadella. How is my favorite little duckling? Oh. <laughs> hey, what did I do? Nothing. Abadella's a little upset. She's got boy trouble. Oh. Now, what happened to your daddy? I got boy trouble, too, Amos. Sit down, Andy. Well, I didn't plan to stay. I saw your light burning. Thought I'd come up and say hello. <laughs> Tell me about this boy trouble in Abadella. And the boy be mean to her, I'll beat his head in. Well, she's got her first crush on a little boy in school, and he hasn't noticed her, and she feels awful. Oh, a romantic problem, huh? 
Well, that's right up my alley. I've been bit by the love bug so many times till I'm a mass of romantic bumps. <laughs> Friday. He left me in charge of the lodge hall. I'm answering the phone and stuff. Okay. I'll give him the message. Goodbye, Aunt Sapphire. Hello there. Lodge members should not before coming into the Kingfish's office. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, what the... Hello, Sandy. Hello. I've been looking all over for you. 
What for? I got something for you. If you hit me, I'll tell my Uncle George. Oh, no, Stanley. I'm your friend. I got some bubble gum. What's your angle? Oh, nothing. I was passing the candy store, and I seen this gum in there. And, and I said, I bet my friend Stanley would like to chew on this. Mm-hmm. Hmm. What's your angle? Mm, no angle at all. I was just thinking, uh, a good-looking boy like you, a stranger in town, I was thinking you might like to meet a nice little girl. This girl some friend of yours? Yeah, I know her real good. Then I don't want to know her. Oh, she's a pretty nice one. You're missing a good bet. I doubt it. If you have to go around giving her a build-up, she must be a real droop. Hello there, Stanley. Hello, Mr. Calhoun, sir. Hey, your uncle is downstairs. He thinks you to come down there. Thank you, Mr. Calhoun. I'll go right down. <laughs> Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. That was a real little gentleman. That boy's gonna get ahead. He's better because I'm gonna knock off the one he's got. Hello, Calhoun. Hi. Hi, Andy. Andy, I thought I'd find you up here. I just want to tell you how much Rue and I appreciate what you did for Abadella last night. Oh, I didn't do nothing, Amos. You certainly did. I've never seen such a change in a job. This morning, she was happy and singing and ate a good breakfast. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that. She says she can always depend on her godfather, that he always keeps his promises. Yeah. She's all excited about meeting that boy. Hey, Amos. There's somebody honking a horn on your cab out there. Well, it must be a fair. Uh, well, Andy, the princess is in a chapel waiting for the boy night. Good luck. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's the matter with you? Calhoun is looking at the prize idiot. What you done done now? Well, I done promised Amos' daughter, Abadella, that I gonna put her in solid with this boy she crazy about. Then I find out the boy is Stanley. And me and him don't get along no harm. Uh oh. Abadella's counting on me, Calhoun. What is I gonna do? You know, Andy, there was a case like that in history once. The case of John Alden versus Miles Stanley. Now, this John Alden, party of the first part, was gonna fix things up for Miles Standish, party of the second part, with his beautiful doll, Priscilla. Party of the third part. So the party of the first part went to the party of the third part and say, how about you man up with the party of the second part? So the party of the third part says, how about you speaking for yourself, party of the first part? Yeah, but what happened? I think that was the beginning of the Boston Tea Party. No tea party, this is serious. Abadella's going to be heartbroken if I don't get them two together. Well, why don't you send her some flowers and a note? That ain't going to make her feel any better. It will if they come from Stanley. Stanley won't do that. He won't do nothing for me. Look, Andy, you send the flowers, you write the note, and you sign his name. Oh, wait a minute, ain't that unlegal? Of course not. Now, let's look at the legal aspect of the thing. In the first place, the boy is a minor. He ain't allowed to sign his name to nothing. He got to have an adult do it for him. You just doing him a favor, that's all. Yeah, that makes sense. Of course it do. But wait a minute. Suppose Narvadella asked Stanley if he sent the note and the flowers. <laughs> Look, Andy. Suppose some beautiful gal come up to you and say, Andy, did you send me that baby blue convertible? What is you going to say? Yeah. <laughs> He's a paper, Calhoun. <laughs> this is a real nice note that little Stanley sent. And these flowers. I, I got a hunch that Andy gave him the money to buy those. Sandy really has a heart of gold. When Arvidello left for school this morning, she was happier than she's ever been in her whole life. I'll get it. Oh, hello, Andy. Come on in, son. We were just talking about you. Yeah. Hello, Andy. Uh, hello, Ruby. That was a nice thing you did getting Santa to write that note and send these flowers. Huh? Oh, well, she like them all right. Oh, she loved them. 
You know, this is the first time she's ever gotten flowers from a boy. Mm -hmm. uh, Andy, you gave him the money to buy him, didn't you? <laughs> you should have seen her this morning. She was laughing and giggling. <laughs> oh, but Della, what's the matter, honey? <laughs> oh, Danny. Oh, I was so embarrassed. I went up to Danny to thank him for the note and the flowers. And he said he didn't send it. <laughs> I'll never be able to go to school again. <laughs> never. Abadella, Abadella, wait a minute, honey. Amos, will you give me a swift kick? I guess you said the note and the flowers. But Amos, I was only trying to make Abadella happy. But Annie, didn't you know that she would go to Stanley and thank him for the flowers? Look, Amos. If some gal come up to you and say, thank you for the baby blue convertible you gave me and you didn't give her one, what would you say? Uh, I'd say, there must be a mistake. I didn't give you one. Hmm, that's funny. When that cook Calhoun says it, it comes out different. Andy, you shouldn't have done this. Well, I'm sorry. But I'm going to fix it. Now, listen, Andy, take my advice. Just leave well enough alone. Uh, yeah. When is the party? Friday. And don't forget to bring me some good presents, too. That goes for the rest of you. Now, be on your way home. Now, wait a second. I didn't know. Oh, Stanley. Hello, Forger. Huh? Do you know the penalty for signing somebody's name to a letter? Well, uh... Ten years up the river. Well, now, Stanley, I can explain that. Tell it to the judge. I'm going to turn you in for forging that mush note to Abadella Jones. Oh, but, Stanley, you wouldn't do that. Well, I might not, if... If what? If you come to my birthday party Friday. And bring me a nice big present that cost at least ten dollars. Ten bucks? <laughs> you know, Stanley, I might do that if, uh... If what? If you invite Abadella Jones to your birthday party. Nothing doing. And you're not in the position to make any deal, Forger. Uh, but... My Uncle George has a list of the presents I want down in his office. Now you go down there and look under the ten dollar section. And don't try to pull any fast ones. I'm going to check the price. He's in outfit, gold watch, motor scooter, a television set. Tammy, that boy got stuff on this birthday list I ain't even got it myself. Ten dollar department there again. Ain't no use, Andy. All the cheap stuff that they're spoken for. The next jump in price is twenty dollars. Uh, I wonder what he got on them people. Andy, this birthday party is going to be my financial escrow. Where the cake, and ice cream, and all the trimming is going to cost me more than they spent crowning the Queen of England. Uh, you got us over the barrel, all right? Yeah, Andy, I've been thinking and thinking. That Stanley had a birthday a couple of months ago back home, but I just can't pin it down. Well, I don't mind giving him the present if you'll just invite Abadella to his birthday party. Kingfish, can't you do something? Andy, if I could do something, it would be to ship that boy back home to his parents in San Francisco. Oh, his home in San Francisco, huh? Yeah. Yeah, well, maybe I could... Andy, uh... never mind the plot. Let's get on with the bankruptcy. <laughs> Uncle George! And Sapphire! Uh. Oh, it's you, knucklehead. Yep. Delivery was supposed to go to the back door. Uh, are you alone? Don't try any rough stuff. Remember, there's a poison wrap hanging over you. But you're right. It's none of your business. But I'm making up a list of the people who I'm going to invite to my birthday party. Oh, uh, is Abadella Jones' name on that? No, and it isn't gonna be. Where's that present you were supposed to get for me? Oh, uh, 
I got that right here. Right here. Happy birthday. Next move is up to you, Stanley. Mr. Brown, how do you spell Arvidell's name? Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got to get a few more things from the kitchen. Yeah. Well, come right in, kids. Come right in. Put your presents on the bed in the bedroom. Come right in. Right there on the bed. On the bed. Oh, hi, Kingfish. Well, Brother Henry, the captain heard is really stampeding in there. Yeah. I don't see where so many kids come from. Stanley must have invited every kid in New York City and the surrounding vicinity. Yeah, and he's getting a lot of nice presents too, Sandy. I think I go back in there and inventory to take. <laughs> oh, hello, Amos. Hello, Hi, hello Andy. Uh, where's Abadella? Here she is. She's a little shy. Come on, Abadella. Oh, hello, Abadella. Hello, Abadella. Uh, Amos, you and Ruby put your things right in there on the bed. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Come on in, honey. Well, how's my little princess? Do I look all right? Oh, you the prettiest girl here, honey. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait right here. I'll be right back. Oh, Stanley. Yes, sir, Mr. Brown? Uh, will you excuse us, please? Della Jones, your guest of honor is here. I want you to come over and meet her. Do I have to? Hello, Fanny. Hello, Abadella. Gosh, you're beautiful. Don't you have a seat? Hey, Sammy. Gee, thanks. Oh, boy, those kids are sure having fun, Sapphire. It was so nice of you to have the party. Oh, we didn't mind it at all, Ruby. Thank you, Sammy. Sandy, this ice cream sure was good. I think I'll get me another plate. Uh, just a minute. Stanley. Yes, sir, Mr. Brown? Uh, more ice cream for your uncle. Yes, sir. Can I get you anything, sir? Maybe later. I'll let you know. <laughs> Anything else, sir? No, that'll be all, Stanley. Sandy, I can't believe my own eyes. Here yesterday, Stanley was pushing you around. Now he's waiting on you, uh, hoof and mouth. <laughs> what kind of hex you got on him? Hmm, <laughs> <laughs> dear Mr. Brown, to reply to your telegram, Stanley's birthday is not until the 3rd of next January. Yours truly is Mama and Papa. Sandy, I was right. I knew he had a birthday, and that little racketeer cooked up this whole thing to get all these friends. Yeah. Sandy, I spent a bundle of cash on this here party. i off and retract everything. Oh, hold on, Kinkers. I'll pay for the party. Sandy. I know what you got on Stanley, but what Stanley got on you. Ain't nobody got nothing on me, Kingfish. I'm just a happy old godfather. <laughs> Henry, a thought just struck me. You gonna pay for the wedding, too? <laughs> 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 